whatever you are in need of. But before you get that thing, this is what you wanted me to teach about. Before you're able to get everything that you need from God, there are some things that you got to do. Yes, God is a covenant-keeping God. As the worship was going, he's saying that because he is a covenant-keeping God, that is why you are still alive. You may not even know the covenant that God has with you. You may not even know the covenant that God has between you and him. But because he's a covenant-keeping God, as the worship, as the song was going on, he said, that is why we are still among the living. He, he has, he's a covenant-keeping God. He's a promise-keeping God. Through the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Through the blood of Jesus Christ, God has kept his covenant. God has kept his promise for you and I. So in order for us to enjoy the benefit of, of the purpose of, of Jesus Christ dying for us on the cross, in order for us to enjoy and receive everything from our heavenly Father, we gotta put in some work. It's like you're going to work and you earn a wage. When you go to work and you earn a wage, it's not a gift, you earned it. Okay, so we must also earn certain things. Many things God has given us for free. He has given us life, bread, he has given us salvation. We don't have to pay for anything. But we have to also humanly make some sacrifices to do certain things. Which, of course, is the will of God. Do certain things that pleases God. Do certain things that, you know, it makes God to move. We cannot just receive everything that Jesus has for us. We're going to put in work. And it's not even hard work. Okay, not like the devil, not like Satan. You don't have to put in, like, break your neck. You don't have to go under the sea. You don't have to travel to Mars. You don't have to go to Jerusalem. Just be in the comfort of your home like I am right now or wherever you are right now also watching. So if you are there, you want this, you want that, you want this, you want that. I hope that there are things that, uh, um, um, is the will of God for you. And even sometimes, God gives us things that we don't, we don't even ask for. We can use um, King Solomon, for example. In a dream, God asked him, what do you want? Ha, can you just imagine? God asked him, what do you want? The man said, I just need wisdom. Just give me wisdom. You have given me all these people to look after. I, I need wisdom to, you know, like to to, to deal with them. And what does the Bible say? The Bible says, God did not only give Solomon wisdom. Solomon only asked for wisdom. And God gave him beyond wisdom. He gave him riches. He gave him glory. He gave him fame. So you are not different from Solomon. You are not different from King David. The only difference between you is that you got to work for it like they also did. Thank you for your presence, Yahweh. The only difference is that you also have to work for it. You also have to do what they did. So, for example, if King Solomon asked for wisdom and God gave him beyond wisdom, you got to find out what did he do to deserve it. Okay, he always sacrificed to God. He, al he always obeyed God. He was always, you know, loving God. Aside from his, you know, his womanizing business, <laughs> there was something else that he did that pleases God. There was something that he does that pleases God. Does that make sense? And that's the same thing that we too can do. We too can do it. God is not a liar. God has not lied to me. God is not a man. We know that. God is not prejudiced. God is not racist. God doesn't like, um, God does not choose black and white of his people. We are all his people. He made us all equally in his image. You are not better than me. Neither am I better than you. That man that you admire so much, he is not better than you. Do you know that? Do you know that God doesn't look at it like that? That woman you admire so much, you know that God doesn't look at it that she or he is better than you? The same way God doesn't look at you being better than somebody else. 
He does not choose and pick. Now, the choice is ours for us to be able to receive things from God. And that choice is to reframe, reframe from sin. The only boundary, the only bridge, the only uh, um, stop between you and me, or sorry, you between us and receiving whatever God has for us is sin. The word of God said, I am holy, therefore you be holy too. The word of God said, God said he is righteous, therefore we too must be righteous. He says he is holy, he is righteous. God will not tell us to be righteous and be holy. If he is not holy, he is not righteous. You understand that? God will not tell you something contrary or opposite of who he is. He knows that as a result of sin, if you don't die physically, you die spiritually. And if you don't die either way, like, you know, if, if you're not dead, because you are living in sin, you are an agent of Lucifer. Every time we choose to obey the devil, that means that we are sons and daughters of Satan. But that's not why God created us. So I want to let you know that you that is listening to me, God can give you anything. He did not even spare his son, Jesus Christ. Are you listening to this? <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> in case you don't believe in Jesus Christ, I pity you. In case you don't love Jesus, I, I, I pity you. Because you go in circles and go in circles and go in circles. Do you know what circle, circle is? Circumference. Circumference is something, it's a circle. You go all, you go, uh, you come back. You go, 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 you come back. You go, 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 you come back. Never end it. Your situation will be going, going round and round and back. You need to be in a straight line, not in a circle, going in circles and in circles and in circles. You need to be in alignment with God, not in circle and in circle and in circle with God. God, that God is bigger than a circle. God is bigger than a circle. God wants to take you further than a circle. God wants to take you beyond a circle. God wants to take you greater than being in a circle. So if you don't believe in the son of the living God, you don't believe that Yahweh sent his son Jesus Christ to die for you to the point that Jesus was not spared. He took the bullet. Pa, pa, pa. Took the bullet. The bullet was taken for you. So, therefore, you must not allow sin to control you. Sin should be not a part of your life no more. Sin should not be in your thoughts no more. Yeah, the devil will bring it to your thoughts because obviously he wants you to rebel against God. He wants you not to receive your blessings. The devil doesn't want you to receive your blessings. He knows that the moment you disobey God, God is driven away from you. And when God is driven away from you, guess what? The devil comes in with full force. And guess what he does? John 10.10. 10. The thief, the devil, Satan, the liar. What does he come to do? No, 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 please. The, does the Bible say he comes to bless you? Does the Bible say he comes to give you life? Does the Bible say he comes and say, oh, well done? Or he comes to steal, to destroy, and to kill you. It is only Jesus Christ that came to take the bullet for us, to die for us, to sacrifice his body, soul, spirit, and blood, and everything. He did not withhold anything. Withhold nothing. I surrender all to you. These are the songs that we need to be singing. This is the type of song that we need to be singing always. Surrender all to our Lord Jesus Christ. Everything I own is yours. 
I'm withholding nothing. We should not be withholding nothing because God did not withhold his son Jesus Christ for you and I. What are you withholding? The things that you are withholding, guess what? It came from God. And the same God that gave it to you, he can take it back. The same God that gave you what you are withholding, what you have made his, what you have made your God, the same God that is the same, like whatever you are withholding as a result of God giving it to you, as a result of God allowing you to have access to it, as a result of God making a way or the provision for you for it. So you, you should not be withholding what God has given you. You should not be withholding yourself from Christ. You should not be withholding yourself from praising God, worshiping God, living to please him and obeying him. You should not be withholding anything, but allowing him to be who he's supposed to be in your life so that you will not be in circle all day. God wants to take you further than a circle. This world is huge. This world is huge. This world, yes, we say, you know how we say it's a small world. Yeah, it's a small world, but at the same time, a huge world. There are nations that God wants to take you to. There are places that God wants to take you to. There are things that Jesus wants to give it to you. There are doors that God wants to open for you. They are blessed. Heaven must be open to you. But in order for heavens to open to you, my dear, you got to put in the work. 